the new techniques will be available only for a very limited population in very wealthy countries. Uh, we have now about 300,000 newborns each year and they are not in these countries, so we have to find solutions for those patients. Now with new cell therapies providing the potential to save the lives of children with rare diseases, I'm here with some top paediatricians in the field to discuss the matter further. Thank you all so much for joining us. Salim, um, how successful are these treatments? I think we are at the doorstep of uh, implementing these new techniques for a broad range of diseases that is not only the uh, genetic diseases like sickle cell disease and thalassemia, but we have also cellular therapy options for leukemias, for AML, in particular currently most advanced for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But I can imagine that these uh, cellular therapies in the future will be the basis for any form of uh, gene therapy as well when we are capable of depleting the uh, myeloid uh, niches just with using CAR T cells, for example, or antibodies. Um, Yesu, what would you say at the moment is the, is the sort of common perception about transplantation? So there is a, an understanding that transplantation can be um, dangerous for these conditions because the rate of complications and mortality is perceived too high. As pediatricians, we often look at these children throughout childhood where there has been a substantial reduction in its mortality and side effects by the medical treatments without looking at the uh, very severe end organ damage. Uh, that means that these patients, once they reach the 20s and 30s, have very shortened lifespans. Uh, the additional issue is that uh, hemolopathies went into transplantation at a relatively late date um, and hence uh, it was thought that only those who had a matched donor uh, could be available, whereas now with the new haplantical techniques uh, we can offer this to any patient who, who warrants it. Marina, how are you able to determine the outcomes for these patients? The advantage from my point of view of gene therapy upon uh, partially incompatible uh, bone marrow transplantation is uh, that uh, the duration of hospitalization is uh, shortened significantly. The complications linked to the immunosuppression are absent. Conversely, allotransplantation so complex as uh, performed by José de la Fuente groups can be performed in very limited places. Would you like to add something to So I think the most important thing when we look long term about all these therapies is that we need to study the, um, how the functional studies are going to pan out. Um, so not just whether we can correct uh, the blood production, but actually whether we're going to make a difference long term, whether the, uh, there's going to be left um, impact or damage to the brain or to the lungs. Uh, and I think that is what's going to determine uh, which therapy we choose at the end. Uh, the other point that we have to understand is that uh, the techniques, the new techniques, will be available only for a very limited population in very wealthy countries. Uh, we have now about 300,000 newborns each year and they are not in these countries, so we have to find solutions for those patients and we have outreach programs within the Pediatric Diseases Working Party that clearly show us that we can cure these patients with very limited resources and I think until uh, gene therapy is widely um, applicable and demonstrated to be successful, we have to continue with, uh, with our techniques that we have at the moment, which is stem cell transplantation, either with post-transplant cyclophosphamide or with T-cell depletion, that yield, at least in our hands, uh, excellent results for patients. I suspect, yes, um, that in hemoglobinopathies we'll be in the same situation as those who treat uh, leukemia. That we will be able to stratify patients have a better understanding of the disease, which at the moment is lacking, have a range of therapeutic options, and apply them uh, according to what is best for the patient, working in a multidisciplinary uh, manner, which will include uh, the entire team, not just a transplant physician. Marina, what's your vision for the, for the future? For the future, I am very concerned and worried because uh, I don't see how we can bring all this achievement to all the people need to benefit. Uh, gene therapy has now very, uh, very high cost. In our uh, department, uh, we try, for example, 
to automatize the process in order to um, limit the need of very complex and expensive GMP facilities. We try to reduce the time for the procedures and also to develop a drug for conditioning the patient without using a chemotherapy. Well, it, it's a debate we could continue to, to talk about for a long time, but we'll leave it there. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you to you. EBMT TV is brought to you from the 45th annual meeting of the EBMT in Frankfurt, Germany. For more like this, then you can click on some of these great videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more of the best in medicine, from cell therapy to gynaecology, from genetics to psychology.